Hello, everybody. Welcome and welcome in on a Sunday night to the original Next Level Gaming podcast. What's up, crew? What's going on, guys? Not hey, much. Hey. Uh, not a whole lot. It Sunday is a, night. Here we go. It's Sunday night. <clears throat> Do it. I hope Do everyone it. has had a fantastic uh, pre Fourth of July uh, holiday weekend. Hope you guys got to see some fireworks. Hope you guys got to see kind of parades, stuff yesterday. like that. <laughs> Jason's in the middle of a thunderstorm, so there's his fireworks for Canada Day. <laughs> so, and we have a wonderful special guest, which I want to introduce right now. His name is Rick Lagnizi. I got it right. Yeah, sir. Lagnizi lasagna, tomato, tomato. Yes. You know? Like I said, we got to say it like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the U.S. Community Manager for War Horse Studios. Welcome, Rick. How you doing? Yes. Very good. Thanks for having me on. I'm really humbled to be on the podcast. Oh, Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, yeah we're, for we're humble for you coming on. And um, hopefully our uh, chat room is going to be nice and active tonight, as, uh, as they always are when we have great guests on. And the um, great part is, is we've got uh, a great game to talk about uh, from, from your studio. And, uh, do. and by the way, for people who don't know, um, you know, back in the day – when uh you know i'm not the oldest person on the podcast ha 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 no you're not peter but i i would just say you're anyway but i'm close <laughs> and i'm the most tenured because this is the nl nl gaming was mine i created in 2001 and uh back <clears> when <throat> we were a website and such we dealt mostly with just pr um as we've been more of a YouTube channel and and kind of starting over again in things. We've talked to a lot of community managers. What what does a community ma what is your role as as US community manager for Warhorse? Well, the, the start off the simple answer is to get the community involved and in, in, entrenched into the game of Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's to make everyone feel like they're a part of it. I mean, a lot of the community for us is is uh is our backers and and new fans and it's very exciting and i get to work with them i i work with them through reddit uh, our reddit account our steam account um, i get to do pr stuff and go and uh, do presentations at e3 uh with toby our pr manager and i get to go to gamescom i've been to what's the one in san francisco gdc i went there once to to, to play our game to show the fans and our people who worked in the industry actually that was who it was for but yeah, I get to do stuff like that. I get to do contests, uh, giveaways, um, up even with customer service stuff, whatever. I get I get involved in, in many ways. I, I actually even get to um, uh, correct their 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 grammar on certain articles and things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're from Czech Republic, you know. They they do good. Their English isn't bad, but they still need a little you know touch up here and there. I took AP English, so I guess they came in handy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. And so you work with pretty much everybody. Yeah, the marketing team uh, specifically. But yeah, I, I get to. I'm the man of many hats. To, well, let, let me not toot my horn here. I, I do what I got to do, and I, it's all about the community. So. I did sort of set you up for it a little bit, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. <laughs> so Warhorse, um, give us a little background on. Uh, on their, uh, you know, their game acumen, what they've been, what they had been working on previously to Kingdom Come, sure. which is obviously what we're going to talk about tonight. Yeah. Um, well, uh, boy, the the project goes way back all the way to. I mean, the idea hit. I think it was, if I have the right date, in 2010. All the way back then, you're just the idea, but you know, 2011 hits. And what's funny is they always like to tell me the story of how you know. When two guys get together in, in Czech Republic in a pub, that's where the legendary ideas tend to happen. That's what I've been told. So, <clears throat> you know, you got you got Dan Varvra. And Dan Varvra, by the way, he, he's the guy behind the creative director behind Mafia 1 and Mafia 2. And nice the, the, the game, those games are so well known that people who aren't even into gaming as well, they might mix it up with a movie or something. But, you know, you say Mafia 1 and Mafia 2, and people are like, yeah, 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 I've at least heard of it if I haven't played the game, right? So... Um, he was the creative director behind those two because little did people know, but the studio was actually in Czech Republic at the time, and it went to uh, the United States, so he wanted to do his own thing. Um, and then you have a couple other important people. Uh, the executive producer, Martin Lima, 
and he um, dra- he was uh, he wrote the fantasy script uh, for the uh, Dragon's Lair. Um, he also worked on Operation Flashpoint along with Victor Bolkin. And uh, um, basically, if I were to put how this game came together, it's an idea. If you take Mafia and Operation Flashpoint, and you have a baby, as people like to try and compare games, <laughs> that would be in a medieval setting. There's Kingdom Come Deliverance. Because really? what, what do you got with Mafia? It's a very story-driven game, right? right. Very story-driven mm-hmm. yeah. decisions. Uh, you have very important decisions you make and things like that. Whereas Operation Flashpoint is incredibly well. They 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 stress on what the realism. So that that's what you get with with Kingdom Come Deliverance, and you know we have a studio right now of uh, about over 100 people. So it's funny because we're not a small like indie company, but we're not tri- we don't have a triple A. Definitely don't try to get the impression that we're like triple A like triple A budget. You know we're we're just uh, trying to create an amazing game that's definitely uh, I can actually honestly say different because it is. Oh, sorry about my dog. You know, Pete, come on. We're doing a podcast. We love dogs. <laughs> we love animals on the podcast. I got Trust cats. Me. We don't deserve uh, dogs. Over my mic. Pets, kids. Well, like, let, let me have some dogs on the podcast because we typically Quiet. have cats. So. Ah, okay. Well, but yeah, so um, there, there, there are some new young guns on the team, but uh, there's a lot of experience and uh, we're very, we're very proud of the game. And we, you know, in 2014, getting more of the background, that's when the Kickstarter it happened, but even I, I should back up a little more before that. We talked to just about every investor you can imagine, and nobody, uh, I'm telling you, nobody believed in what we were doing. They thought, if you know, how can you make a game without dragons or magic? Because in Kingdom Come Deliverance, there's no magic, there's no dragons, it's dungeons and no dragons, right? That's so kind of how we be a wizard. <laughs> is there women? Uh, is there what? <laughs> is women, there women. Jesus. If there's women, we're good. Yes, there's women. There's no okay. wisdom. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No. Um, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I will say this, though, that we did find one. And, you know, uh, everything was based on a successful Kickstarter. And in 2014, we were the third most successful Kickstarter of any in that year. And we, the, the, the goal was like 300,000 um, euros or whatever. And we did over a million um, that's and cool. you know, incredibly, yeah. So if it, I mean, I really can honestly say, if, if if it wasn't going to be backed or that we didn't get good results, we won. We definitely wouldn't be here. So it, it is all thanks to the backers where we are. Nice. Right. So, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Juan. Well, I say it's just gonna. It just goes to show that there's a there's a group of people out there who are looking for what you're offering that want to get away from the orcs and dragons and fireballs and, and want want to see some more yeah, and whole magic and stuff yeah, and sorcery. Yeah. Well, Absolutely, and it's, and it's funny because I've heard many different comparisons to the game, and none of which I think fit. The last one that I saw coming out of E3 was, you know, it's it's like Skyrim. Well, Skyrim, you were battling dragons and monsters and things like that too, and wizards, and no. <laughs> right. And so I I didn't quite see this. This to me. Um, is a lot of I mean I like I'm I'm ready for a game that that doesn't have any of that 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 doesn't have orcs and trolls and and it's just it's it's like going to the Renaissance festival you know <laughs> if that makes sense I mean yeah just, I got there done that you know and, and so this is a game that that appeals to that um, and before we go to the Kickstarter because the Kickstarter is very interesting. To give us the the quick rundown on the story. I mean, we know it's, uh, you know, we're Holy Roman Empire, which also has not really been done yet, to my knowledge, um, at, at least that I can remember in recent not, times. Not in Bohemia. Not in Bohemia, which, which that was at that time in the early 15th century, in 1403, that's where the, the main part of the Holy Roman Empire was happening. So... Um, and forgive me, I, I think I cut you off. I just get excited about oh, it because no. I love about it, you know? Oh, no. So, this is, yeah. You're our guest, and you have the information yeah. on the game. Interrupt away. Sure. <laughs> okay, well, let's do it. Um, but it's, well, it's, was, it's, Sorry? No, I would say I was reading up on it a little while back here, and I was uh, really intrigued by the attention to detail that appeared to be being made with the architectural designs. And, you know, I want to see castles because, you know, we don't have castles over here <laughs> we never never really did the castle thing they're all over there and so i've never seen one and i you know i think that'd be cool 
Now, and not only are you going to see castles, you're going to see them actually reconstructed to how they looked back then. I mean, we, oh, nice. we with all the, the yeah the satellite uh, from satellite, satellite imagery. It's not uh, the game is not necessarily one to one because it's a video game, right? So maybe we put the towns a little closer together or things like that. But you'll have plenty of room to explore um, the castles. Um, oh my goodness, I, I could go on and on about them with how, uh, the House of Ratai. How I'm big sorry? is this world? Uh, about sixteen kilometers squared. So uh, I use the measurements and check. I, I don't even know how to measure kilometers. I'm sorry. It's terrible. But <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's okay. a pretty big open world. I mean, where you see is where you can go. The global illumination in the game is fantastic. We actually use the cry engine too, believe it or not. And um, you don't see a lot of people using it, but I actually love it. I mean, I, I can actually look back now and still say that Rise for the Xbox One is still one of the better looking games I've seen. Just, just my oh, opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, yep. Hey, I no, agree. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have to agree with that too, actually. Um, and you know, even like the early Far Cries, I like the early Far Cries way better than the newer Far Cries. Um, and and they were run off the Cry Engine and Crytek. You know, sorry Ubisoft, I love you guys, but you know, Far Cry was way better with Crytek um, and the Cry Engine. But anyway, um, so yeah, again, it's an open world uh, first person RPG. And it's a sandbox, and, and and believe it or not, there like we're we're gonna have history repeat itself. Like, um, you could go ahead and spoil some of the events in the game by by looking back at history. But while there may only be one ending, it's up to you how you get there. And it's a very interest. We have a lot of interesting concepts and things in place where uh, you will have to make decisions that you're going to have to stick with and be okay with those decisions you make. You're not you're not going to be able to go back and necessarily change, excuse me, change your mind. However, even when you do things that you may regret, sometimes you can go and try and figure out how to take care of a said situation by going about it another way. So everyone's going to have a different story to tell, even though it all leads to one event. And that's what makes it so awesome because I can't wait to see all the different stories we're going to hear about. Hey, did you see this happen? This cutscene—that was amazing cutscene. It's like I didn't have that cutscene. It didn't actually happen huh. because different oh, events neat. unlock different cutscenes. So, oh, see, that's nice. neat. Yep. Yeah. So, how much of the game then is also you know the side quests and things like that? That you know, you know, you can get kind of bogged down in those if they're not germane to the story. Um, there are some games that do it really well, like Horizon Zero Dawn does it really well, um, and there are some games that that Pray. just you know just are there for for their purposes. Where what how nonlinear or linear is the story? That's a great question because there's some aspects that are linear. Like I said, there are some events that have to happen. We're basing this on actual history, but it's also a video game, and there are some, see, this is what makes it really interesting, even with side quests, is you, I don't know if you want to call it necessarily branches per se, but you do one thing that can lead to another that can lead to another. And even, uh, you know, there's things that are time sensitive too, but, you know, in this game, let's put it this way. You could easily put in 50 to 100 hours. Um, you, you could put in 30 if you just want to really rush through the main quests. And even that could be challenging to do. But with the E3 build, just to give you an idea, um, I, I can go through it in 20 minutes. I know exactly what to do. I I, I can, yeah, obviously, right? I played it over right. and over and over and over and over again. Ted, speaking, but, speaking of that, yeah. while we're talking. We'll go ahead and run that build. Thanks. Thank you for, uh, we'll do it without yeah. sound for now. But, That's uh, Hadouken in there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but, uh, no. yeah, so we'll we'll run this while you're talking. Go ahead, continue. So the, the, the actual our, our testers who play this for the first time, it took them four hours. The average was four hours just to get through the, the E3 presentation. So uh, right now, this is taking place in Silver Scalus in 1403, which is where you start in the game. This is actually where the first quest happens. And you're Henry, son of a blacksmith. And you're on a quest for vengeance as you're basically, um, you're, well, your mom and dad has been murdered. That, that was just showing your mother. And, and not to, I'm not trying to just give away a spoiler because in our E3 trailer, it shows that the whole town of Silver Scalus was raided and it, the Henry talked about his father being murdered and he's on a quest for vengeance to find out what's going on. And um, there's a civil war between uh, King Sigismund of Hungary and uh, who invades 
Bohemia, which is modern day Czech Republic, who's King, uh, it's King Wenceslas IV, and they're half brothers. And King Wenceslas was known as the lazy king. He didn't even show up to his own coronation. The Pope's ready to crown him, and he's not even there. So King Sigismund looked at this as an opportunity to go to Silver Skellis because silver is a popular place for mining silver and wipes out just about everyone. So you're one of the sole survivors. And right now you're, you're on your first quest and you're, you're going to go talk to your father and your father has something really important for you to do. And he, he needs to forge a, a sword for Lord Ratzik. And what's really important about this sword, and again, this is not necessarily a spoiler because you know your dad's going to die, but this is the last thing you do with your dad. So we do make it a very sto a heavily story-driven game, and you find out that the sword has a significant meaning. So much so, it's on the box art, box art cover. Um, and and by the way, I'm I'm talking like it's almost as if I'm doing the presentation at E3. So please, cut me <laughs> it's off. perfectly. Oh, it really is oh. okay. It really <laughs> is. Wait, uh, I love your enthusiasm on this. But just please cut. Okay. And so he did. Oh, <laughs> right. We lost him for a second. Oh, there he is. Man, I'm loving that artwork, though, in the video on the right-hand side. Yep. Hey, can you guys see me okay? Yeah. Sorry, right back. Yeah. And, and okay. let me point out real quick, just because um, uh, the video is, you know, with everybody's camera screen capture and all that. Um, the, it doesn't look the, as good as it we're, should. We're running a little... We're running a little under 30 frames per second as far as the overall podcast, but I can tell you that that video was 60, um, the original render. So it was smooth as silk um, for what we saw. Just yeah, in case no, people absolutely. are at there counting frames. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, so, and again, even, even this demo is still uh, obviously a major work in progress anyways, but... So right now what Henry's doing is he's talking to his father, um, or not his father, he, his father sent him on a mission to collect some stuff that he needs to, to forge a sword. So he's talking with this guy, Kunish, because Kunish owes it. He's like your local jerk off. There's hey, only you that drunker. guy. <laughs> he's that guy. Yeah, so he owes his father, Henry's father, some things, and he doesn't want to give them to us, basically. And there's different ways that we can go about and try and convince him otherwise. Now, see, we failed to intimidate him. So when you fail something, it doesn't mean game's over. You can find, uh, uh, you know, ways to well get them to give you the stuff. And here's one of them: nice. fight them. Smack them. <laughs> now it's it's kind of cool because you can kind of make them like yield or surrender. You don't have to kill everyone. You could go through eighty percent of the game without killing anybody, but you will have to kill certain people. But we um, we jumped ahead in the presentation, assuming that we did win the fight, and then he'll let us go into his house and take his goods, and then we can sell them and buy charcoal. That's one of the things we need to forge the sword. Um, if we lost, it's okay because we could still find a way to get the charcoal and things like that, or find a way to get money. Cause we need to get materials to, to purchase the charcoal from the shopkeeper. So that was so, my question is if you lose a fight or, or, or choose not to fight, if that's an option, can you then maybe, you know, uh, go five finger discount on his stuff? Ah, yes. Of yeah, course. I, I always go that route. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I love the Elder Scrolls series, but all of my characters, no matter where they start, they all learn lock, pick and sneak. <laughs> yeah, that's about me, but <laughs> pickpocket and pick all that, that stuff. Yeah, and then you you trigger that you you might trigger the the, the crime uh, system, and so you know you got to watch that. And he might actually want to kill you if he sees you because he's usually around his house doing work. But yeah, so there's a <laughs> lot of different ways. Like for, it's it's really awesome. Like <laughs> yeah, here's a way to get money. I bet you guys have never heard of the dice game called Farkle. I, I have. Not. I love that game, dude. No way. <laughs> Yeah, literally, that's the one where you have to get like five of a kind. If you get two, you have to get a double to keep on going, right? No. <laughs> I've played Parkle. I know I have. I just. Uh, oh, no, I know. I'm just saying it's like a thousand year old game. And. Oh, it, maybe they renamed Parkle and they made it differently because I played Parkle. Well, it's, it, it's really cool because I'm not going to. I don't know if we have time to get into all the details of it, but bottom line is let's say no, this guy. Keeps beating, well, if this guy keeps beating you, you could go in the market and buy cheating dice. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but what's crazy is you, your reputation it, it, it affects not just the whole town individuals too so if if he finds out you're cheating he might not want to play with you or or other people will start to not trust you um there's a whole bunch of scenarios that can happen so it's kind of neat that you, you still have the opportunity to do this or do that but here's another cutscene that that's kind of important 
what's going on if they're in the pub right now and there's a guy that's talking all this smack he's from germany and saying that it was actually good that they were invaded it's good that all these people are being slaughtered and because king wenceslas is a horrible king and these guys are frustrated but they that made he's a actually... song about him yeah, good I, king wenceslas i mean i'm jewish and i know that how could he be bad yeah. <laughs> oh man he was called the lazy king but anyway um I think are we? It might oh, be yeah. just going. That was the end of the. That was the end of the B-roll demo. Was that discussion? Okay. So well. Anyways, um, well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll actually finish on that note. At least what was going to happen is, so these three guys are like, hey, listen, this guy's talking crap. We're gonna go to his house. We're gonna go and physically grab some manure in front of his house and throw crap against his wall, like his house. So he's talking crap. We're gonna throw crap and. This is what's kind of cool. You can say, I'll go with you. And and you could go with them and throw the crap yourself or say no, and they're still going to do it. Things are still going to happen in the game. I'm, I'm going to go on a tangent and get back to this if you don't mind. But Please, go for let's it. Say, there's a guy, it. and he's like, yeah, and he's like, um, hey, these bandits are coming after me. Uh, they're they're, you know, they're going to hurt me or whatever. Can you help me? And you can't be like, hey, listen, I got about five hours of side quests. Give me five hours, and let me go have some fun. Let me go throw some, throw some die, play some Farco, and I'll get back to you. Well, <laughs> the game is time sensitive, so five hours from now, you could find him dead. He's not going to wait. And the bandits aren't going to wait for you. So, oh, nice. uh, but you could also and say, say, you know what? Screw you, pal. I, I'm going to go and I'm going to find those bandits, and then I'm going to go align myself with those bandits, kill you, kill that guy, and then do quests with the bandits. Nice. Um, huh. But yeah, things are very like. And if you get to, to this guy at a certain time and help protect him against the bandits, different cutscenes, all sorts of different cutscenes happen. But going back to um, uh, those those guys, so if you fought, if you lost that fight with Kunis, uh, there, there would be a third option that would show up and say, hey, listen, guys, if I go do this with you and risk getting in trouble, you're going to need to help me fight Kunis. And then it's four on one, and then you can fight him and get the stuff. So a lot of different scenarios will happen based on even your failures, which is really cool because the game must go on. And you could even have um, a big scale battle. We have a big scale battle in the beta. It's like up to 60 guys that fight. And even if you retreat, the story's still going to go on. So it's a yes. bunch of replayability. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. So you could, For sure. Yeah, you could, you could basically play the game after you're finished and get a whole different experience. It, it, um, a whole different experience well, as far it, as maybe different cutscenes. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, cutscene yeah. wise. There's always a main story, but it's pretty cool that you can do tons of things to get there. And, and to clarify, there's no classes in the game, so you can decide to be Spartacus one mission, be a warrior, right? And just try and kill everybody, and then trigger the crime system, have a bad reputation, run away, whatever. I don't know. Um, then, then the next mission or quest, you can decide to be more like a bard and talk your way out of things. You can try and seduce people. Um, you can also try and intimidate someone. Or maybe you want to be a thief. And you want to go in and you know um, go in and steal some stuff, or do this or that, or sneak your way in and just take the only one guy out. Or I don't know. You could do whatever you want. And you only level up what you use, kind of like Skyrim in a way. So, yeah, it's awesome. You'll get to do whatever you want in so, one way, shape, or form. That's a good question. Without classes, um, you know, where are your? I, I, I mean, I'm assuming that because it's an an RPG, you have your standard. Um, attributes that you can build up. Sword skills and uh, bow skills, yes. that sort of thing. Yes, and when you use it, you level it up, and then you unlock perks. So, for example, um, uh, the more you use your sword fighting skills, you can unlock combos as well. But, like, uh, your speech skill. Your speech skill, you level up by obviously talking or reading. And the more you talk, you can maybe open up a perk that um, we, it was very brief in the presentation, but it showed your actual skills in the bottom left corner, and then his were in the bottom right. So even the NPCs have their own stats. And mm. you could actually have, uh, but but you don't see Kunish's skills because you don't really know much about him yet. But you can actually see their skills unlocked by talking to people in the town um, and find out who he is, talking to Kunish more. Or if your speech skill levels up enough, you can unlock a perk where you can read people a lot quicker. So then you can get uh, to know more about their skills. So you can say, hey, you know what? This person has a low, uh, maybe a toughness skill. So maybe I can intimidate them. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. It, it, it's, yeah, there's a lot of ways to. Is it next year yet? Because it sounds awesome. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> 20, 2018 is when it's, when it's launching, Nate. 
<laughs> okay, I'm ready. Yep, next year. He <laughs> said yes. He said seduce. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. So, yeah. So the um, so talk about so you you. CryEngine is what you guys chose, and I mean you could yeah. see it in in here. Um, you know the 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 sexy pick these days is of course Unreal Engine. Um, what was the what was the thought process to getting to CryEngine, um, or was it just something because of when development started that that was what was that 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 would be the the probably the easiest way to even go into about it because you know I'm I, I'm just the guy that gets to have fun and talk about it all the time. I'm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the decision making is left for those other jabronis, you know. <laughs> but uh, here's what's really interesting. Now, going into the CryEngine, we're we're the first ones to ever test the CryEngine from a first person's perspective in a role playing game. So we had to use our own engine too, and we kind of merged them together, if you will. Um, so even with our own engine, like we we um, uh, we we you know took pictures of the environment in Czech Republic and. Uh, 3D images and then scan and render them into the game. So even the plants and vegetation are from Czech Republic. I, I had someone from San Francisco who was from um, Prague, and, and which is the capital of Czech Republic, and say, those are my trees. That's my grass. Oh, you know, yeah. um, That's the type of compliments, man. That good stuff. Keep you going. Uh, yep. Tension oh, to detail that's, right there. So, But the CryEngine is great. Um, it, it was just challenging to do a first-person role-playing game. With the CryEngine, but it's it's gorgeous. I absolutely love the CryEngine, and uh, with, with the global illumination we use to make you see from one end to the other, the the um the, the dynamic weather, which is great, which even has effect in conversations and strategies you can use in missions. It's it's pretty sweet. See, that's that's neat. That's cool stuff. Like when you would, and and you know, you talk about not having a AAA budget, but being able to do these kind of things that. Not many other games are doing, especially, I mean, you know, if you want to throw another game up there that you can try to compare this to, say, The Witcher 3. Um, now, again, there's wizardry and stuff like that, but we want to talk about scale. Um, that seems to be a game that everybody kind of uh, has compared every other action RPG to at this point in time. Um but you're doing a lot of those kind of things on a much stream, much more streamlined budget. Uh, is that? I mean, does the is that just due to the talent of the of the studio, or? I mean, I, I, I definitely so. Um, but you know, one thing I always like to say, and this sometimes it shocks people when because we do have. Um, you know, a couple big scale battle skirmishes. We have castle sieges, a couple or one or two or whatever, and things like that. But it's actually not a fighting game. And that's what really separates us. And everyone's like, what What did you just say? Like, are you, are you serious? It's like, it's not a fighting game. It We, you know, if we're basing it on history, there was not big scale battles that happened every single weekend. Mm -mm. You know, they didn't just say, hey, let's go fight and kill each other and die, right? And it, so, Sounds like a blast. <laughs> there, yeah. there's, there's events, right <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but there's events that will lead up to these big scale battles or things that will like really make it meaningful like oh my goodness there's where you know you're like you're surrounded and there's, there's a lot going on but it and, and the battles are awesome and they're they're a lot of fun but at the same time it's more about finding out what's going on and investigating and exploring and and while you can be that guy that kills everyone and it plays it like an action game you can try and do that but it there's also, uh, it's a very story-driven game. There's over four, I think over four, almost four and a half hours of cutscenes in the game. So, oh, wow. Uh, man, wow. this is... Uh, hey, by the way, uh, Nate, I don't know if it, I think it's, I think it's you. When you turn your body, I think your microphone on your headset's pushing oh, against your shirt. Sorry. I thought it was yeah. Rick at first, because then his no. voice would cut out, <laughs> but I think you're actually cutting him out. <laughs> So. Oh, my bad. Thanks, Nate. Uh, no I problem. keep chatting I mean... on the computer, and then I was like, "Oh, well." No, it's it's perfectly fine. I just I, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from, and Juan alerted me to it. So, um, anyway, so but but there is combat in the game, and so we see sword play and um, and things like that. And uh, talk about the gameplay elements yeah. beyond what we just saw. So I mean, maybe even to elaborate more about. Even though I say it's not a funny game, we actually have 
um, professional fencers and swordsmen that, that have worked with us and shown us, especially in the mocap studio, how they fought back then. So we use HEMA, which is Historical European Martial Arts. And believe me when I tell you that, yes, we still have a lot of polishing to do. That's why our game is coming out in February. I mean, the whole game has been made. I, I, I even have, well, <laughs> I always sound like rubbing it in, but I, I can play the whole thing if I want. But there's a lot of there's a lot of bugs. Let's be honest here. There's a lot of things we need to polish. But the combat is awesome, and um, you know, there, you, there's even scenes where you can decide to take a more of an innocent approach, or you can actually trigger a skirmish or two based on your choices. So there, the, the fighting is still there, and you can train. There's even a, like a tournament area. Like, and again, it's single player only, just to, to really make that clear, because we wanted to make a really good single player game. But even in the tournament area, you know, you can showcase your skills and it get, really be put to the test. And it is not easy. You're not going to be able to take on like three, four guys at a time unless you're trying to use your bow and back up and go back in. Because even you have a stamina, and your stamina will run low, and it's a buffer for your health. And when, you're low, when your health goes low, uh, your stamina goes with your health. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not even trying to pick on Dark Souls because I love Dark Souls. I'm playing it right now. I love to die sometimes in that game. <laughs> uh, actually, the other night, I, I fight this boss. And I don't know about you guys, but whenever I get to the very end of a boss, it's so hard to beat. I freeze. I don't know why. But I'm like, I don't know why I don't do what I was doing before. And I just want to go up and slice it to get. And then I, I died. I was so mad. But yeah, that happens to me all the time in Dark Souls. Like, oh, like, you cheap bastard. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, where was I going? Oh, what I was just saying is, so in Dark Souls, you can still run away even if your health is really low. But in our game, when your health is low, your stamina only goes as far as your health. Because how, how would it be if we're making Dark Souls is not realistic, so that's totally cool. But in our game, um, I mean, undead, right? So, but in our game, um, uh, you know, if trying to make it realistic, how are you going to be able to run around if your health is really low? You only have so much stamina that goes right to how, you know, high your health is. So, um, but being that the combat is, is challenging in the game, we also, like, have um, certain things, like, where you can parry, repost, you can do that perfect block. So, like, when the enemy's coming at you and there's, like, a green shield uh, in the center of this, like, I don't know if you guys notice that, like, star in the different mm -hmm. directions you swing your sword. Mm -hmm. uh, when the shield shows up, if you block it perfectly, it's like Matrix, so you can like, you know, it gives you time to strike back. So it's pretty cool, but um, you, you can play the game you want, and that that's what's so freaking awesome. So the fighting not quick time events. That's good. No, no, and it's not not at all. There's there's none of that. It, the only thing is, is like when you do that perfect block, it just gives mm -hmm. you a, a little time to strike back to try and make it more okay. For Sweet. counter, video I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah counter attack. Definitely, yeah, I'm it, ready. We're doing a perfect counter, so. Yep. Nice. And so, like, oh, good. Oh, I was saying, uh, reading up on it too with the combat. I liked how the uh, period correct all of the equipment and weapons and garments and everything appear to be like the layering of armor and all that. I'm all into that. My, my old D and D nerd coming out. Oh man, the the armor is awesome. We have 14 different slots for armor, and overall, and then um, but what's what's really important with the armor is, as you said, the layers. So. In the game, we, we're not going to allow you to put, like, your long johns on over your heavy full-plate armor and stream it. Like, look at me. I'm so cool. My long johns, you know, no. <laughs> oh, come on. You just ruined the game for me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the layers are very realistic. So you'll have, like, you know, a regular maybe um, long johns or something. Then a gambeson, which is, a, you know, a thicker coat to give you some padding. And then you have your chain armor and then your full-plate armor over that. Because imagine just having... Like that full plate armor with nothing underneath, and you get hit with a mace, and you're dead instantly. Your chest would cave in. You gotta have padding, even over the the helmet, the uh, like a, a heavy metal helmet. You gotta have some kind of cloth or some padding underneath. So you'll even see that in the game, and you can repair your armor. You can get your armor cleaned, because on a side note, there's um, impression in the game, and impression is incredibly important as long as intimidation. These skills go hand in hand. For example, if you uh, talk to Kunish, and you actually have full plate armor on, and maybe you have a bloodied sword. Think about it realistically. Would you rather wear that or wear like that screenshot there with that guy that like town's clothes? What, what would you rather wear to intimidate him? 
the the full plate armor and the bloodied sword. That'll so increase your nice innovation. Nice flowered skill. hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can have a high speed skill or an even a high intimidation skill all you want, but if you don't wear the appropriate clothing, it's going to be that much more difficult to talk someone who's already intimidating out of a situation. <laughs> Everything works together in this game. Makes sense. So, yeah. Yep. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's like Damn. so much thought put into this. I can't. I can't wait. Man, I, I mean, this this is this is like the consummate, um, uh, what was it a Knight's Tale kind of game? You know, you start out, you start out as a as the the. It was the son of a blacksmith. Is basically what you are. I didn't play the audio, so you couldn't really hear it in the B roll. But you are basically, kind of the 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 young kid making his way, and you grow into this into this position of of um, where you go into the game and that's it's very movie like yeah yeah so I mean and at the same time you're not gonna be like some superhero or become the king um, you're you're gonna still be the humble you know servant guy but you're you're also going to be someone who does gain a lot of respect too based on the decisions you make and some kind of this or that without trying to give anything away but you know there's there's gonna be some Interesting things that I don't even want to say any key words. Just, just know that it's a very awesome story-driven game that I think people will be talking about for a little while. That's what I hope. And um, much, much more could be said. That's, you know, I, 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 I sometimes I don't know where to start. I don't know where to end with this game because there's so much that's going on in a game that um, comes from Bohemia that no one has ever had the opportunity to see before. And I, you know, I honestly hope that it does so well. I hope that we can get the word out enough. Um, we believe we have in some respects, but, you know, I, I've, I've talked to some people at E3 that have never even heard of the game, that, like, some really important people in the industry, like, you know what, I'm going to call him out, Jeff Keeley. He, nah. I talked to Jeff Keeley uh, just for a brief moment. He doesn't know me, you know. I, I just saw he him. He should. I did. Yeah. <laughs> right. I did the if you told thing, him all what you're telling us right now, his mouth would be on the floor. Is yeah. <laughs> he'd be on the you, you he'd have Hideo on one side and you on the other. <laughs> That's As I said, point. the only reason he doesn't know is because it doesn't have a Kojima name on the box. All uh, right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> send your send your hate mail to one at <laughs> That's what I'm here for. I'm the heel. Uh, yeah, but I know I was just saying that you know, you'd be surprised, like um, uh, you know what? Let me throw out another one. Aaron Greenberg. I was like, I, I saw him at the Expert Zone party at E3, and I, I just asked him really quick. He hadn't heard of it. So I'm like, oh, man, Aaron, come on, the marketing guy for Xbox. So, you know, these guys got to know. I want well, them to know. And yeah, I'm going to have a talk with Aaron. Don't worry. Yeah. So, I mean, but, okay, so you're – this is an interesting question. So you guys are self-publishing the game? Uh, no, Deep Silver. Deep oh, Silver, yeah. Deep Silver, okay, never mind. Uh, even oh, I knew that. Yeah, I was I reading on the website. Know. Hey, I, I knew. So <laughs> it was reading skills fair, coming to use. To be fair, I knew about the game when it was in Kickstarter. I mean, I I had heard about this game last year, um, or not last year, two years ago when it when um, uh, when it was coming about in the Kickstarter, and I I was already intrigued then. So I just I didn't know Deep Silver was was publishing it. So you wouldn't be going through. Um, the the because uh, I know it's coming out on PS4 and Xbox One, so you're not going through ID at Xbox or Sony's indie development platform. You are um, going straight through development or straight through publishing. Right. And Deep Silver will do. I mean, they're they're doing a great job, obviously. So it's obviously not a knock on them or anything. Like I actually am so like obviously look at all the games that Deep Silver has helped with in the publishing, and and they they know their stuff. And I've met some really cool people um, that are from Deep Silver at E3 this year, so. It's awesome. No, they they have a pedigree. There's no doubt. Um, they're good. Yeah, I think you guys got in with a good, with a good publisher. And it, it just you know, so that could be why. Because I was going to ask you if because you say Darren didn't know anything about it, but like the Chris Charla or anything like that. But I guess not if you're going through um, a full on publisher. So, uh, but they're going to yep. find out now because I'm going to I'm going to tweet out the link to this to them. Say, Aaron, you need to yeah. check this game out again. Oh, usually when it comes when it's around time of release, uh, Expert Zone they have a, a channel that I visit frequently, and they play your game and kind of usually 
have you know a developer somebody on there talking about the game like i know the guys there quite well and yeah, yeah. they like promoting new games well, they love um, playing games just like the rest of us yeah and actually on that note um i'm, I'm actually I, I think it's safe to say i'm friends with ben ben now uh ben rudolph um Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, we, we always compare notes because he has five kids now. I have five kids. <laughs> and um, I see him every E3, and sometimes we talk through email or Facebook, whatever. And um, I'm actually going to – I've already worked or shown – was it the beta to – I think his name – what's his name? Joe? Uh, well, anyways, I showed him from Expert Zone. He's the guy that, that leads up the streaming. So I'm going to be doing a Let's Play or, you know, something like that on, uh, with Expert Zone. Who knows when, but I will be. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a good route to go. Like yeah. they yeah. they love promoting games. You know, they do giveaways and stuff like that on their channel. So oh yeah, we may have to figure out how to big, talk to you about audience. that. Yes, I want to tune in. So definitely tell us when that comes out. No. Yeah, I'm actually probably going to do a live stream of my own uh, for E3, the E3 build, um, probably sometime next week. That's what I'm hoping to do. Oh, snap, right, well, definitely. Yeah. You've, yeah, yeah. Got, you've got our information, so let us know when. We'll we'll make sure we're uh, we're pumping it for you, and then we'll get in there and stir up the chat. Right on. So, yeah, Mike I will mean, scare everybody. So, in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So are you st- – is this still on track for uh, – um, Is it February 13th Yeah, that I see? Yeah, yeah, we we can't afford to delay it again. To be honest with you, we can't. Um, we've already delayed it a couple times, a few times already, and we, you know, we've always had the philosophy. Even though you, there was actually a really good article on, I think it was Kotaku about, um, you know, games being delayed and the whole process that goes into it. And it's really tough because, especially when you have a Kickstarter that's backed, it's even more difficult to delay a game. I think. But we cannot release a game until it's ready. You know, that's the right we, answer. Mm-hmm. We just can't, and that's what I've told people for a while. We refuse to release a game until it's ready, and it will be ready February thirteenth. There's no way we can afford to have it be delayed again. It, you know, I, I just I, that's what you know. We've already announced it at E3, like in a big way. We've never had a specific release date. This is the first time we said, okay, it's coming to Xbox One, PS4, PC. You know, uh, uh, February thirteenth next year. Now, can I order it with flowers so I can be like, here you go, here's your Valentine's gift? <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Perfect timing, man. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. That's, one for, that's your Valentine's and a, box of, yeah. and a box of chocolates. And a box of chocolates. So, oh, yeah, look, there you go. <laughs> so after the game gets released, I notice you guys, you well, you specifically, uh, quite active on Reddit. So would Reddit be a great place to, you know, report any bugs that you might see when you're playing? Or would something like, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, be a better route? Well, I mean, you, you definitely can. Right now, I'll tell you, like, if someone has a bug in the beta, well, first off, the difficult thing with the beta is that we we actually have not uh, patched it, and we, we just can't. We need to focus. I mean, again, because, you, you know, you think of big studios. Well, we don't, we don't, I mean, we have a decent-sized studio, but it's not huge, and we need to focus all our efforts on the final game. But getting back to the point, is when there are bugs, we there is a website support.kingdomcomrpg.com that people can go to right now, and we'll, we'll probably I I would imagine use that for the final game. But people can feel free to definitely say stuff on Reddit or or Steam because again I do both of those, and um, I may not be like the actual support crew, but I'm sure I've probably seen it or heard of it or whatever, and I can show people where to go. I mean I just want the community to be active uh, as much as possible, so I'll never say no. But yeah, I see you got a contest going on right now too. Posted three days ago. If you want to let anybody know about that, <laughs> yeah, I mean there there are posters. There's on Steam and Reddit. You can double dip. Uh, not to just give a tagline on my Twitter, but I I tweet no, about yeah, it. No, yeah, go right ahead, dude. please. <laughs> yeah, oh, I put well, your Twitter. I mean, I put your Twitter right on the right on your screen there for people. Right, right, right. Yeah, if you if you follow me on there, I'll be doing other contests too. But the. Uh, the posters are from E3, so they're incredibly rare, um, and I I think they're fantastic. Because, you know, they're actual screenshots of the game, of course, um, and it's 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 awesome because the only time you no know, you can't go buy these posters, so it's a pretty cool pretty cool contest we got going on. All right, I'm gonna have to enter it then. 
So yep, I, I've right. got I've go got check that out on Reddit, like and uh, like you said, Steam as well. Yeah, but the the NLG office is kind of littered with some new posters, and I need some new blood, so I'm gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Fastback asked if the game will be at PAX. Well, we're gonna be at Gamescom. That I can tell you. Um, we're going there 100. percent Anywhere else? Not sure, but we are definitely going to Gamescom. Nice. And you're going? Cool. You're gonna be there. Yes, I went there last year. I had an amazing time. Toby and I, it was great. In fact, um, so there's there's a lot of people that are um, from Germany. Uh, well, of, of course there are. I mean, it's in Cologne, Germany. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was sorry. I was trying to like explain, but I'm like, well, if you know, if you've heard of Gamescom, you pretty much know it's in Germany. But there's sometimes where Toby, because he's that's that's where he's from, is Germany, not Czech Republic, and. He speaks German the entire time, and I still got to play and do the presentation. But I usually do okay. He gives me little indicators, and I'm playing while he's talking German. So I'm like, okay, I think he's talking about this, so I should go here. So <laughs> that's fun. So Gamescom, you know, for people that, that have never gone, let's switch real, real quick. For people who have never gone to Gamescom, um, especially now with, with, the, uh, with letting the public into E3, which I, I don't – yeah, that that we could we could spend a whole hour talking about that decision. But what's the you know what's the difference in vibe between? Yes, no one. I we're really not. I was just being facetious. Um, what's the vibe difference between E3 and and Gamescom? And maybe it's not. Maybe they're kind of getting close to each other now. Well, it's really interesting, and I I don't mind giving my honest take on it. First off, E3 is uh, they're way more strict there maybe not as much this year because it was open to the public but i look at it this way i'm still a gamer man i'm still a fan and you know what did, did, i i was in a booth all the time so i wasn't i i can't get out i work it i i don't have any of the don't get to do any of the quote-unquote fun stuff yes i have fun at the booth but it, you i cannot wait so okay last presentation because you are exhausted right but mm -hmm. when i did walk around like going to the bathroom running really quick you know <laughs> um, I got to go back for the next presentation. Um, it was a lot, obviously a lot more busier, but they're, they're, it's also like a fan's dream. So it's like, I can't even blame them there. It wasn't their idea. And, you know, the guys at ESA that run E3, they do a great job. And, you know, you know, we don't know about all this things and, you know, revenue and stuff that, cause E3, you know, sometimes less companies go or, you know, EA does its own thing sometimes. And I don't know, they got to do what they got to do, but games come. You want to complain about E3, try going to Gamescom, where there's like hundreds of thousands of people. I think last year, what was there, over three to 400,000 people? Wow. So, Yikes. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Gamescom, the re I actually like it there better for doing our presentations. They have like a food bar for us. They cater to us. It's amazing. Nice. Like the service, and, and, oh boy, you know what? I know some people who work for E3 though, so I hope they're not listening to. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? I've I've spent, I'm able to I get some to, ideas though. I went to E3 Next for year? a for a decade. I have no problems. I have no problems giving my opinion on where it's gone. <laughs> but the thing is, there's some. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Um. Uh, uh. No, I'm not going to say his name. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so no, but I and, and you know whatever. It's just that. With Gamescom, it, I don't know if they're more laid back because it's so there's it's all open to the public or whatever. But the business side is not as busy, of course. But at the same time, you know, it's still a madhouse, and and I'm still in my little prison booth, you know, the whole time. So, but it's it's fun. It's fun. The parties after are fun too. Yeah, I do remember those. Nice. Yeah, busted. That's super. super. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah is uh, super's one of our. Uh, he's one of our our great friends. So yes. <laughs> he's all good. Oh. Well, actually, the the folks in our chat room are always uh, such good people, and and from around the world, um, uh, annihilators from uh, uh, over in Europe. So I, I saw uh, he was um he was asking earlier whether or not it was single player only or or only online, and then he said, "Man, this sounds like a hundred hour game." Uh, so. Um, our our audience kind of spans even over to that area, so that's it's really cool to to uh -huh. you know, to talk about that stuff. Um, so some of the stuff that was in the Kickstarter, because uh, you guys, I mean, you guys blew the Kickstarter out of the water um, when all was said and done. I mean, the original um, the original Kickstarter amount 
was mm -hmm. like, well, I can't, you know, 300,000 pounds, I guess, whatever the, um, you know, whatever the exchange yeah, exactly. rate is for that. Correct. And you guys almost quadrupled that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we got to over a million, one million, one hundred something thousand, or something like that. Yeah, one point one mil, and you hit every single stretch goal except for better voiceovers, which you were this close to. What? And actually, <laughs> if I may interject, yes, some of the the voiceovers has come so long. So if you play the beta, you can rest assured that uh, we've come a long way. And actually, to to further that point, um, are you guys familiar with the actor Brian Blessed? Yep. Yeah, he sounds familiar. From Great Britain, from England. I mean, if, if you, you know, he's an incredibly popular actor in Europe. And he does a voiceover for a German military engineer uh, named Conrad Kaiser. <clears throat> and his voiceovers are amazing. Um, we have Luke McKay as Henry um, and, and so on and so forth. But the voiceovers have come a long way. Some of the um, stuff that we talked about, you know, ha might have to come in DLC or things like that too. But yeah. Yeah, we we did hit uh, most of the stretch goals. So, yeah, when when you, I saw that you guys had, uh, you know, the chief of the Hawkmen, I uh, was on board from uh, Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've come a long way. We're very that's we're very thankful. Familiar. Yeah. Now, some of the stuff that's that's in there. Um, so medieval, you know, live symphonic orchestra music. <coughs> oh goodness. I, I, I got to tell you, um, wait a minute, it is like pouring rain right now. Hey, he was doing that here earlier. <laughs> that'll, stop those, that'll stop those pesky fireworks, people. Oh, I am. St stand by. Two seconds. Maybe three. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I got to hit the automatic button to shut the garage here. I, I worked out in my gym and uh, <laughs> I was in the garage. This is fantastic. All right, anyway. <laughs> all right, so while he's doing that. To all the I'm people back. who have jumped into our uh, chat room who I haven't had a chance to say hello to, welcome everybody. What's up, Jeff? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So um, yeah. The the music. Talk of the music. Oh yes. So it's uh yeah. Some of the the guys um that I'm familiar with is Jan Valta. He's like our, our main music composer along with Adam Sporka. Adam Sporka. If you find him on Twitter, he's an awesome guy to follow. Great, great guy. Great sense of humor active on Twitter. He always talks about some of his other projects he's doing, but um, we take the music incredibly seriously. Very serious. If you if we, you play the game and you just explore in the woods and you're listening to the music, like, oh my goodness. Like, the, a, a great game always has great music. Yep. That could be playing. If the music the is Marcos, bad, you're Zelda, even playing. to the Castlevanias, to, heck, even the, the, the some of the music in the background in The Last of Us, and we could go on and on and on, right? Like, all over the place. Music is everything. Um, but uh, so even in like the monast uh, within a monastery, the, the church um, in Sazava, no, Sazava, I believe. I believe it's in Sazava. And um, Adam Sporka took a team to uh, a, a church and they sang in uh, Gregorian. Um, forget all the terminology. It's not my expertise. But uh, basically, they, they actually like sang and spoke in the language uh, according to how it would have been back in that time. Right. And it, it really to feel, obviously, again, making you feel like you're there. It's just, there's a lot of attention to detail in the music. It even changes when you're fighting, if you're doing good, if you're doing bad, you know. There's some other things <laughs> do that as well. Music. You know, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Music is, is very important. It really is. I'm a, huge, I'm a huge video game music guy. And Thanks. it's such a huge part of gaming, and I, I want to go to there for those uh, Gregorian tunes. Uh, SoundCloud.com, you can already go check Warhorse Studios, and you can see... Um, I was just to about to ask if I can get a soundtrack. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll yeah, check out SoundCloud. Check out. Yeah, are, you and, guys, are you guys thinking about selling a soundtrack separately? I mean, that, that seems to be a popular thing these days. You know, that's really interesting. I mean, obviously, we have... Um, you know, if you if you were to go on our website now, you can see like you can get the deluxe version or whatever, and you know you can can get that. But uh, I, I don't know because you know like, that's not again my area. But I, I could see us I could see us doing that. I, I the music is just awesome. So y'all are in for a treat. That's I definitely set some mood mm. to the games and stuff. You know, I love music as well. You know, it makes a big difference in you know kind of what you're feeling and what when you're doing something on the screen. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like like Juan, I like video game music is a huge part of my 
of, of what draws me into a game, which is why, you know, for me, the, the older um, generations of, of, you know, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, older, even older PlayStation, um, you know, where graphics wasn't necessarily the, the, um, the push, and so getting to CD meant music. And, and so if, you know, something like this, uh, where we get authentic, orchestrated, uh, you know, Gregorian chant and things like that. I mean, that's that's going to be fantastic. I mean, it is. It, yeah. It's, yep. Absolutely. Pumps you up. Now, are you also? And this was one of the stretch goals. This was the last stretch goal that you guys had before, um, I guess, before the Kickstarter ended. A, a dog companion. Yeah, that's good. That this this puts me always on the hot seat when I get asked this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, we had a video update and um, it, we actually were not able to make that put that into the game. And we, you know, we we had talked about this and was it six months ago? So we at least covered our basis a while ago. Um, even some things that, like I said, were maybe thinking about, like even a female playable character. Like side quests, things like that. There's there's things that we're working on in DLC, but then there's again like the dog companion thing that um, that wasn't able to make it into the game. So all right, and that so no yeah, right. Sometimes life is rough. Don't worry, man. Well, I'm telling you, I got to respect that because you know, I, in the wake of some games in recent history, not being able to tell people no, that didn't happen, or no, we couldn't make it work, or no, we didn't, we couldn't fit it in, or whatever. You get games that come out with these expectations that can't be met. So, you know, I mean, kudos for, for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Just, you know, it's sometimes you got to be honest about it. And, I mean, I don't think that's, to, to be quite honest, I don't think that's going to detract from what this game is going to be in any no, way, not one form. Bit. No, I'm excited. <laughs> no. Now, how about horseback? Are, are you still doing that? Because that seems to be like a, a, a one of the original uh, parts of the uh was you can you can travel by foot, you can travel by horseback. Oh yeah, that's still gonna be in the game and we're even gonna have a little basis of some kind of mounted combat. Um it, it, you know it, it might jousting? not be like I was just about to what? ask. <laughs> oh jou jousting. Well, you know, you, you are gonna have uh halberds and spears in the game of course, which is awesome. But um you know we're still working on the mounted combat thing. You know, it'll probably be more elaborate as we make another game, because we've never been shy about we're obviously making another game. If you if you look in the Kickstarter, um, I mean, unless we absolutely tanked, right? But I, I don't see that happening. But, um, you know, we talked about making three acts. And the first two acts we've actually put together because it got way bigger than we thought it would be, which is another reason for a couple of the delays. It just got to be huge. And um, with the next game, you'll, you'll definitely see some tweaks and improvements and stuff like that that... Uh, that you know, we don't really have anything to say about it yet, but yeah, no, I yeah, I agree, and you know, I, something that um, that's actually on the Kickstarter that I think was a great point that they made right off the bat. We talked about it right at the beginning. Was you know, um, in big bold letters was the um, the claim that well, people want wizards and dragons. I, I think. I think people. I think people would um, would appreciate not having them for once. Yeah, um, like medieval yeah. combat. You know, not always fighting a dragon or whatever, but you know, just the whole sure. combat thing excites me. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you the game that's sure. that's finally come to mind. I've been trying to formulate this um, since you know since we had started talking tonight, and and you know people. People talking about, you know, well, it's like Skyrim or it's like this game or it's like that game. I am almost attributing it to, to a modern day. Uh, now, Peter may know this one. Juan may know this one. Um, my young friends at the bottom may not. Uh, Cinemaware made a game called Defender of the Crown long, long yeah. ago. Um, mm -hmm. It had a lot of elements of... Uh, not just combat, but it was, you know, uh, friendship and, and taking over lands and things like that. But it had no, it was an older game for older PC and, and Atari and Amiga and that kind of stuff. But 
there wasn't any trolls or wasn't any wizards. It wasn't. It was just straight up. It was almost. Uh, it was remade later on as Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown. So I don't know if maybe that sounds any bit more um, uh, familiar. But that's the kind of game that I'm starting to to get the sense of this with. Is that this is this is like and and that game that that appeals to me so much. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, I'm definitely in day one. I mean, uh, it is. It looks like uh, exactly like something I don't already have four times. So I'm all about that. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Finally, something new. Yeah, I really like that. There's no, you know, wizardry and, and magic and all the, you know. And you had mentioned stuff. It's really cool. Rick not being one of, like one of the largest studios. And I tell you, in recent years, all of my best experiences of gaming have come from that kind of double A genre, if you will, a double A level, if you will, because uh, of the 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 foibles of the triple A and their budgets and the things they have to do for publisher's sake. And, you know, so, yeah. so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I want to get Deep Silver in trouble. Have they uh, pushed you to, to, uh, to do anything their specific way, or are they just looking to you guys to make this game and, and, and them to get it out? No, they've worked really well with us. I mean, we, we, you know, even by the time we talked to them, we had most of the game uh, what, what, and what we wanted to to do. Um, you know, they, again, with their help and everything, we're able to get it released in time. And it's, I mean, on time for February 13th. And, you know, they, again, they were really helpful with us at E3, getting everything set up for us. Uh, and not, not just E3, but just even all the, the marketing, the, the promoting of the game, the publishing of the game, of course. And, uh, you know, when we first talked about it, we weren't sure how our fans were going to take it. But, you know, people seem to understand, you know, we, we want to get this game out there. We want people to know about it. We want to be successful so we can make more games and more games. Dan Barber is a very creative mind. Martin Klima, the, all these guys, they want to they wanna keep going. You know, we're not going to stop here. So, Well, I would hope not. One and done is never a good thing for a studio. And there is a lot of time. I mean, I, I'm, you know, looking at the, looking at the people – uh, I mean, Warhorse has a has a site, and you can check all these guys out. And um, I mean, that's a lot of talent sitting there at the yeah. top of that of the, that list. I mean, um, you know, these guys these guys do speak for themselves. I mean, it's there's there's a ton of um, of talent there, uh, and yeah. one of those guys mm -hmm. is even a programmer for. Horizon for Forza Horizon, so you know, I mean, it, it it's so well rounded. I mean, so yeah, I would hope that that this is the beginning um, of. And look, I, I, I people are are pining for single player games, I and mean, this is this is a place where you guys have a real chance to to jump in because you know we sort of see the industry moving into a games as a service kind of thing and multiplayer and like one of the uh, uh, I think it was Annihilator 83 who was in the chat room I mean his initial um, question was is this thing online only because if it is I'm out and so the fact that it's a single player yeah. game um, you know that that you could really sink your teeth into I mean that's I think that's I think that's a uh, it, it's a it's something that, that the gamers still want and I think a game like this could deliver that. There's no question. Um, I saw the question about Play Anywhere by Super Cooper. Um, the, you know, right now I'm not sure we don't have anything on that. Um, I, Play Anywhere, I will say, is awesome. And if I might even one-up something, because, you you know, you talk Play Anywhere, then you start talking Xbox One X, you start talking uh, PS4 Pro. And at E3, we had we had playable kits for the on the PS4 Pro, the, play, the E3 build. And we absolutely love the Xbox One X. Um, and just know that we're looking into everything because we want it. Well, we like what they got. So it already looks beautiful. Though. That was yeah. a. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to be the guy to ask about 4K 60 Xbox One X. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can just tell you, we really like both con both the new consoles. I, that's all about I can say. But just just know that they're 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 they look great. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So hey, there's definitely February a difference plenty between plenty of time to to patch that stuff in. Yeah, yes. and I mean the beta build, I was amazed by it. So I look forward to seeing the future. Yep. Now is that really? that beta is still not running, correct, or is it? 
But you can still play it. If you, okay. if you purchase the game today, you'd have access to the beta. Um, hmm. and, and, and the beta PC is only idea. right now? Yeah, PC only the beta will okay. probably... I think it's safe to say the beta will only be PC. It won't ever probably come out for Xbox or PlayStation. Um, because again, the, the beta is just, it's an old, you know, it's over a year old now, a year and let's see, June, July, a year and like uh, four months old. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you get the, you know, you want to update the beta, but like I said, we got to get this game out. But you can enjoy the beta. There's a lot of bugs, but at the same time, some people have put in over 200 hours. I had someone that said almost 300 hours they put into the beta. Wow. Wow. How big of a a slice is the beta? That's extreme. It's only like one, man, what is it? One sixth of the size of the actual map. Um, There's a lot that obviously the game the, the beta does not touch on first we had the alpha which started in samapash and then uh which was the first um well not first place you start in the actual game but then the beta opened up to be obviously bigger than that but the beta is not um it's, it's pretty big but it's not ginormous either uh but it is pre- it is it is big it is decent you can get a decent idea of the game but like i said there is a heck of a lot that we've actually shown at e3 that you can't even do in the beta so Hmm. For example, even stealth. Like stealth is going to be awesome, and people always ask about stealth in the game. And you have to level up your stealth skills. Of course, you can do the dagger one hit kills right in the heart. You can put people in sleeper holds, and and if you you they can actually kick out of the sleeper hold, like in like in WWE or something. You got, you got the sleeper hold. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, but then you can put them to sleep. It's pretty cool. You can go like to the bandits camp, or or a camp or whatever. You can put a guard to sleep or uh, the whatever a soldier, a human soldier or whatever, and then like. They can like wake up and then you can like hide in the bushes and have them go and say, Hey, listen, there's someone here. And then that guy left his post and then maybe they leave their post and go somewhere so you can sneak somewhere else, get around because you distracted them. A lot of cool strategies. There are so many different things you can do to strategize. It's awesome. It's not like um in some games like uh, Grand Theft Auto, which by the way, you can't compare it to this game, obviously. But if we're talking about a crime system, um, policemen somehow from miles away know what's going on. Well, obviously technology. Obviously, I'm sure, you know, you could say, well, they walkie talk to each other, or call each other. Or, you know, things got out. But in our game, not, you could, like, raise some, some ruckus and the other enemies in the camp or the bandits or the soldiers or whatever have to at least hear or see what's going on. Otherwise, they're going to stay in their spot. So it's not like everyone else will come running out after you. If you make a little mistake and you can stop those guys from trying to run to tell the other guys, you'll be okay. Cool. A lot of cool things. Oh, yeah. good. I'll be safe yeah. then. I usually make mistakes in games and then I have an entire town chasing me out. <laughs> right for Pitch, sure pitchforks sure. and torches for jason yeah exactly <laughs> at least i don't die at the title screen like you do in dark souls mike <laughs> wow. you're not wrong <laughs> the, 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 the joke the joke here is is i uh i wish to run that game over with my car ah nice i yeah. saw that even you about that it must have been uh was it you peter that the dying at the title screen thing? I know, it was Jason. Yeah, it was Jason. Oh, yeah, it was Jason. Jason I, oh, yeah. He likes to tease me about that. And he's not wrong. I like Dark Souls. I like Dark Souls. <laughs> I know you do. So. He's not wrong. So. I'm just not that good at it. I can just, you know, somewhat get through, but <laughs> I never finished the game, so too hard. I'm still on my but first But they're fun boss, to play. So. <laughs> they're fun to play, though. I'm a glutton for punishment. I literally will not use certain things because I want to make it that hard. I always play the warrior guy. And I don't even, I don't know, like I said, I just try and do it the raw, like, sword shield, like, very basic stuff. And I don't know, I just always like doing it that way. Like, in uh, the Breath of the Wild, you know, when you beat certain bosses, you can get their, like, part of their, like, um, like the best perk about that boss, and you can use it yourself. I turn it off. I'm like, screw that. I am not making this game easier. And <laughs> I, I, did, I wanted to brag about it. That's why I was asking you guys earlier if you guys have played Breath of the Wild. I am not an achievement hunter. I used oh, okay. to be. You just like to make I, it really hard on yourself. Insane. Like when I played Doom, <laughs> I hadn't played Doom in years, and I and I did the a, the hardest mode it would let me do. Um, I, how about this? Call of Duty Three. You ever played on the most difficult mode possible? I tried. Call of Duty? I was yeah. like, this is ridiculous. It is yeah, it's a, cheap. <laughs> They're but, throwing grenades from everywhere possible. <laughs> that's a Call of Duty World at War. That one was horrible on the hardest mode. Freaking grenades uh, come from everywhere. But I love it. 
I never oh. play like a Wolfenstein game or anything like that without trying to play it on the hardest level. I have to. It's like it's like a thing. And then I get yeah. Then I get angry because I die a lot, and I, it's so it's like I, I did it to myself. Space goes you guys right the last of us. Yeah, yeah it's great. Game. Playing through it right great now, song. actually. So I, when I got uh, the PlayStation, I got it way late in the game. I got it last year, or the year before. Well, maybe it has been a while now. But anyway, I I got the Last of Us, and I again hardest mode. That's all I want. But what I didn't know is when I got the bundle or whatever with Last of Us. I got the DLC too, and in the DLC, there's an extra harder difficulty, and it's for if you've already beaten the game, game, <laughs> then it can get harder for you. Well, I just started on that one, and I never played it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I played most of the game doing stealth kills because I never had ammo. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing, and I there, there were some moments I literally don't said I don't know if I can get past this point because I'm not going to have enough ammo, and I had to play sometimes like two or three hours to get past one spot because I put on the hardest difficulty with nothing. <laughs> And I, I didn't know. I didn't know that it was a DLC hard mode, but I, I would have done it anyways. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so what kind of, I mean, what uh, other than, of course, Kingdom Come Deliverance, what kind of games do you like? I mean, what are you into? Currently I'm playing uh, the Ghost Recon Wildlands. Um, oh, <laughs> that, there yeah. you go. The, the left side of your screen there <laughs> is uh, <laughs> the guy underneath Peter. Ah, and nice. and that's their game. Yeah. yeah. Recon was a game that if I was going to play competitively and it went back in the good old days where they actually had good multiplayer, um, I would have definitely tried if I had the time. Uh, I I really can't wait to see the multiplayer that come out Ghost Recon now. But yeah, I play the hardest difficulty on Wildlands and I was playing co-op and my friend was playing on a lesser difficulty and I was always wondering, I'm like, man, I'm not saying he's a bad gamer, but I'm dying way more and there's no way this is possible. <laughs> <laughs> We do not have the hardest difficulty with me, so it's like now that he put on the hardest difficulty, it's actually way more balanced, so they don't all come at me. And they see, <laughs> yeah. you know. it's like playing division when everybody else is level thirty and you're level like seventeen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the division. What a great game. But I, I love um, games that are strategy shooters. I don't like Call of Duty very much. It's just me. I like yeah. the older Call of Duties. Um, I'm with. I like said Dark Souls. I just beat Doom not so long ago. What a what a game! Yes. I great game. Yes. See, I just once again, we were talking about soundtrack. I want that soundtrack. That soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Rock your socks oh. off. Oh, yeah, man. Mick Gordon. No, I'm I'm but with yeah. you. I you and I probably beat that game around the same time. I, I took me a year to play it, but man, once I got into it, there was no stopping. I, I don't know what happened, but my game kept crashing, and I was getting so mad because I was getting towards the end and. Then I started getting the blue screen of death for two months. I took me to f all this time to figure out it was one of my memory uh, Ooh, um, sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll do it. But anyways, one night it was actually working. So I played it for like six hours straight because I'm like, I am not going to have this game freeze up. Because once I can play it, it doesn't freeze. So I played it for six hours. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, I just beat the game, babe. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty legit boss, too. <laughs> yeah, it was. Once, so, once you figured out the 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 pattern, though, it was figuring out the pattern. Once you got the pattern, you were good. Somebody, it was. I think it was. I think it was Nathan who gave me the kind of the hint to that one. Yeah, it's very old school in that way. But I thought it was a. I thought it was a great throwback boss too. Agreed. Yeah. Exactly, man. Now you mentioned um, you mentioned memory sticks and stuff. Are you more of a PC gamer? You uh, do you? I mean, obviously, you have a PlayStation. You have an Xbox. You you game on. But are you, and a switch, and a switch you know, too. Right, right. I put in over 130 hours, and that's with my kids watching me play pretty much almost the entire time. We we play like we were playing for an hour or two a day, and sometimes pushed it a little more. My wife's like, "Babe, relax." <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly would have never been a PC gamer if it wasn't for Kingdom Come Deliverance because I obviously I, I mean I it drew that much interest. I was a fanboy of the game before I worked for them, um, but and I would like go over my in-laws house to play it <laughs> and i'm like i can't keep doing this so i bought a really <laughs> nice here my brother-in-law built it for me but now i have absolutely anything i i need to play games on i don't care nice. about playing on a game you know like um a small handheld that's not for me i don't play any mobile games that that's i just don't like it um i'm all about the bigger screens baby and i you know but i'll, I'll play a lot of things i i have such a backlog man i got neo i can't wait to play i got even xbox one games quantum break 
Uh, I don't care what people say about that game. I'm going to play it. I know I'm going to enjoy it. Love the story in that game. Have, have you enjoyed old. Remedy games? I mean, like Alan Wake and Max Payne. Of course, Payne. Alan Wake was awesome. Yeah, then you will, yeah, you'll you'll very much enjoy Quantum Break. It's not without flaw, but it's really good. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I, but I think once you, what we will tell you, I think because Juan and I, Juan and I have the, a lot of experience in that game, play it the way it's meant to be, not the way people think it should be. It's not a cover. Uh, sh- it's not just a cover shooter. Right. Don't play it like a cover shooter. Play it. Yeah. Play it like it's meant to be. When you figure out what that, you know, how that works, it, it's going to be really cool. It's, it just, it just clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Use those abilities. Uh, what do you? Because um, I'm, unfortunately, while Peter and Nathan um, beat uh, Ghost Recon, I, I, I got caught up in other games, so I'm starting to get back. To it, what what do you got? Uh, Ghost Recon on PC or Xbox or P or PS4? Um, Xbox. I some Ubisoft games. I always, I I just love like the division. Uh, the division. I had it on both Xbox and PS4. I also had uh, Rainbow Six Siege on both consoles because I I had friends on both. I wanted to play. I love those games. And then, but Ghost Recon is Xbox. All right, so. You should- you yeah, gotta, send us yeah we're we're gonna have to get you our gamer tags. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to run with us. Yeah, I'd love to. Especially have you like, done the like, we, we love to get siege together every once in a while and just go oh, at yeah. siege. Like we'll go at siege for Jay, like Peter and Jay's like two or three hours, right? Oh yeah, because yeah. it's fun. Nice. Like, so, still yeah, love that we're, game. We're gonna have to. We're you got. You're gonna have to party up with us. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll definitely we'll we'll, we'll get gamer tags. I want to do that. I, I love playing. And actually, if I if I play with guys, I like to play with guys consistently in the game. I, I play with a, a friend of mine for Ghost Recon, but and it'd be nice to uh, to get a, like a group of four or something like that and go at it. Have Absolutely. you tried the new tier mode yet? Uh, no, I have not. You said you like the game harder. <laughs> that's ten times harder. That, that's <laughs> what I heard. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's hard playing with two people. I gotta imagine it's a lot easier with four. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Unless we're trying Nate is to throwing C four on you half the time. I, I, <laughs> but yeah, we're like we're trying to get this one document. What are the what is it called? The Kingslayer document or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kingslayer. And files. we're in the prison, man, and it is insane. I, I hate calling on the rebels because I don't want them helping me. I actually kill them sometimes. <laughs> <'cause I don't laughs> know. Oh, that's right, Nate oh, Sally. So <laughs> they they get into room, yeah, Nathan <laughs> likes to blow you up with grenades, and Peter likes yeah. to hit you with helicopters. <laughs> yeah, a little EMP where you're flying around. That's the landing. funniest part. Quiet landing. <laughs> Sometimes you need help, though. So yeah, so we're definitely gonna have to do, we're gonna have to party up and play. Um, and, sure. and you know, look for for Kingdom Come. I think everybody here is is on board with this game. I I think all six, all four, of, five of us rather. And um, and I know that. So uh, our other. Uh, our other host, Frankie, who unfortunately is in the middle of moving, so he couldn't be with us tonight. You're kind of in his in his um, window. Square. I know he's on board with it too. So you you definitely you definitely have us, and awesome. Um, you know, we want to yeah. we want to continue to help uh, help you you know show the game off. So um, you know, we should talk about some some other opportunities to uh, work with you on 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 showing the game to people and, and, you know, to our, to our fans. Cause I think, uh, yeah. I, I think that's a great thing. Absolutely. I, I, I on the soundtrack, everybody. by the way, definitely keep me posted. Yeah. I'm going to okay. go check that out. I want to hear, I, I definitely want to hear this on SoundCloud. So talking about those games, but you had played, had you tried, uh, uh, for honor, Rick? I, the only time I played for honor was at E3. I went to, uh, you play, they call it, um, and if you play you like Ubisoft party thing, and uh, it's very cool. I, I, but I can't say I've given it enough of a chance. I only played it for like fifteen minutes. Um, I like to play more, but I, yeah, I I'm just curious because of the melee combat aspect, you know. But uh, yeah, I got into it pretty heavy, and uh, I, if you were into it, I was going to invite you to come get kicked off a cliff. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's my thing: is just shortcut the fight by throwing people off cliffs and let them get mad about it. Awesome! <laughs> awesome! Yeah. He's the master of trolling when it comes to that game. <laughs> uh, oh, so. Yeah, I'm just it's, it's a shame I haven't played it more, but Yeah. So all right. So um you know, I want to make sure that um everybody uh uh is able to um 
fulfill their family duties and stuff like that. We do thank you for uh, being able to stick with us for a while, too. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, man. I, just, I let the yeah. place know, and we're good. And, and, so. and I got to tell you, um, we, want you, we want you back on. Uh, whenever you know, whenever you've got some time, you want to just come and and talk games or some other things that we typically do, um, you know, on the show that we won't do tonight. But I do want to. We are gonna we are we are gonna give you um, a taste of one other really cool thing that Juan do does. It. And uh, if you've got yeah. an extra five minutes, um, ten maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know how long this one is, but uh, it's cool. Yeah. So. Um, let me uh, switch over to it. So this is what we like to call Juan's Retro Recommendations. He does this every week. This is his 16th, actually. Awesome. A couple of classic old titles in the, uh, in the intro there. Yeah. Usually you hear music. Oh yeah, you typically do, but I'm having some issues with. Uh... Oh. Yeah. I'm afraid if I that turn it on, it's gonna off. make an echo. Yeah. yeah, we don't want the echo. Yeah, no we'll, echo. We'll just yeah. listen to music in our heads. Yeah, when you go back, if you go back and check it out afterwards, you can hear the music that goes along with it. Was that one River City Rampage? The one back a little earlier ago? Uh, I was older. The N the NES had a River City Rampage. The originator. River City Ransom, that was one of my favorite games back then, for sure. So good. So good. Oh, this is classic. <coughs> yeah, he did he's done some great stuff. Here's my favorite right there. Desert Everybody loves Desert Strike. And, and you notice, Juan, it's a little bit of a remixed uh, video. I, I, I did see that. It was nicely done. All right, let me uh, cue you up here. Yeah, I, I want because of the video on this one. I want to I want to do a little bit more of it before we get it rolling. Okay, it's, it's a little bit different, but uh, this week we're going to be talking about. Hang on. Here it comes. Silent Service on the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, circa 1989. It was actually released originally on PC in '85, uh, developed by Micropose. And published by Microprose, I should say, uh, who was that was founded by 1982 by Bill Seeley and the one and only Sid Meier. Uh, this game was actually originally designed by Sid Meier. Uh, the NES version was uh, developed by Rare, and of course they were founded in 1985 by the founders of Ultimate Play the Game. Uh, they had several successful NES titles, uh, you know, like your. Um, RC Pro Am, Battletoads, uh, you name it. They basically became second party devs for Nintendo. They were acquired by Microsoft in 2002. And you got Cameo, Perfect Dark, uh, Zero, and one of my favorites, uh, Viva Pinata. And of course, they're working on Sea of Thieves now, which I'm looking forward to. And all those uh, games it, you can check out on Rare Replay. True. Uh, it was published in uh, the U.S. by Ultra Games, which was a, which, and I learned this in this process. I didn't know that Ultra was a, um, a division or a subsidiary of Konami, and that Ultra came into existence because uh, it was like Konami's way of working around Nintendo of America's strict three or five games per year for third-party publishers. So the way they were cr cranking out games back then, they they put it under a different name. But of course, Ultra was good for Metal Gear. Uh, Snake's Revenge and uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Uh, that was dissolved in 1992 as Nintendo became less strict with the launch of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So uh, you go ahead and get it rolling. All right. Unfortunately, you won't hear the sound on this one, but, yeah, but the that's people okay. watching the video will. Groovy. So it's a single-player submarine simulator. It's not story-based at all. It's uh, simulated missions and patrols. Uh, it's set in the Pacific Ocean during World War II, and you control a U.S. attack sub. You spend your time patrolling for Japanese shipping, and you can actually use realistic submarine tactics in the game, which is kind of crazy for an NES, you know, game of the day. <coughs> uh, tactics including the end around, where a lot of times, especially submerged, you're slower than your target, so you have to kind of spot them at range and move ahead of them, and then submerge so you can spring on them. Uh, also, night attack is a big thing because with a low, if you keep your profile low, you're pretty much invisible. In the video here, I'm out on patrol, and we're burning some days of fuel, day-night cycles as we go. 
And uh, I'm looking for troop ships, cargo ships, tankers, anything to help the war effort. And those are going to be protected by deadly destroyers and Kaibokan uh, coastal patrol ships. So when you start an engagement, you get the... Uh, <coughs> It looks like the periscope view. It's actually called the periscope view, but this is actually from the deck. We're surfaced, and we're up on the con tower with binoculars, and we're identifying some ships and their type, and I'm, I'm finding that we got two cargo ships, I think it was, a destroyer, and a, and a Kaiboken. So I closed as much as I could, and I've trimmed some of that down for time's sake, but I fired two torpedoes at the destroyer because it's the biggest threat. <coughs> now, from the, from the game here, too, uh, aside from this view, you can go to the charts view, and you can get overhead view of the position of the ships and such like uh, and you can back that out to like you know whole <laughs> ocean uh, scale but we can see the torpedoes heading towards that first destroyer there uh, to make my surprise start of the engagement uh, those those uh, destroyers are no joke they're faster than you are on the surface or submerged their guns will tear you up if you're surface their depth charges will get you if you're not so it's a big problem so he had to he had to get hit first and now he's crippled he's burning he's on fire and he's slow so it's less of a problem. And now I'm missing terribly with the deck gun. I've got my deflection all wrong, and I'm just putting shells in the ocean. They're firing back, and my sub is starting to take some hits, and the smaller craft, smaller escorts, turning to come get me. So it's time to get underwater, time to dodge those guns. So while my crew is starting to uh, affect some repairs, now we're underwater, can't use the, the scope or can't use the, the binoculars, so we're relying on our gauges. And we have our depth, we have our battery, we have our fuel, torpedo tube status... Uh, depth under keel, it's, all that information is here, which is pretty slick again for an NES game. Back to the chart view, the smaller Kabokin's coming around on me and I'm, I'm continuing to dive. I'm trying to get into a, trying to get into a uh, thermal gradient in the water, which will throw off their sonar a bit and maybe they won't drop charges on me. And I'm going to bring the throttle back down to, to nothing and go silent and hope they pass by, right? <coughs> Excuse me. One interesting thing about this, as we're waiting on that, is the control is actually done with both Nintendo controllers, one and two players, for the single-player game. The control scheme, because this is originally a PC game, is a cursor on the screen, and that's all your number one controller with your A for confirming and things like that. The second controller is used when you want to change your gun deflection or change your... Uh, your direction of the say periscope or the or the binocular view, and you can also do uh, other trick emergency commands with button combinations on that. So it's pretty pretty complex for its day like that. Now we've gone we've gone silent. We're checking the damage. The crew have have this zero gallons per minute leakage, so we're in pretty good shape again. We're underwater. The Kaibokens passing back over. So the destroyer is still just trying to deal with his problems. The other car other cargo ships are slow, but they're leaving. And uh, thankfully, the Kaibokan decided not to drop. He didn't spot us, and he didn't drop any death charges. So now he's going to be coming around behind us. It's about time to uh, spring the trap. So what we're doing is, as he comes behind us, we're going to grab the second control. We're going to hold down B and, and press A, and it's going to blow the emergency tank. So now we're surfacing really quick. And I got a little trigger happy with coming out of that, because when you're in the, the interior view, uh, the simulation is paused, but our depth is climbing rapidly here. We're going to pop to the surface like a cork and that small escort's going to be behind us and I keep trying to get to the to the binocular view but I'm too soon. We got to get got to get out of the depth. So eventually I figure it out. We get the last couple meters there and we can take a look and we're going to spin it back around to the back and we're going to give them both of those uh, two of those four aft tubes. Mm. And I just think it's kind of crazy that in a Super Nintendo game you've got all this going on, this kind of depth of simulation. So, NES, uh, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. They, uh, in, in that, uh, you know, again, 1989, right? Um, so there goes the uh, Kaibokan. It gets a tube in the back and a deck gun shell, and he's <laughs> done. The destroyer's hitting me again, so it's time to get away from those nasty guns. So we dive. On the way out, we did get one more torpedo out of that back tube. So he is going to be in trouble, which is basically nice. just going to leave us the uh, just going to leave us the two uh, unarmed uh, troop transports, which we'll clean up. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the game. I mean, uh, I don't know if you can consider it, you know, graphically impressive for the day. Uh, the ships are pretty clunky looking, especially up close. But uh, the level of sim is like beyond really a lot of things for its time, and uh, it's got tons of scenarios you can play or uh, this open kind of patrol mode, where basically you're going. Um, going out and just trying to get as much tonnage as you can with what you've got on the sub. 
the PC version sold really well, and it was uh, remarked well upon for its complexity and graphics, which were a little nicer at the time than when you get on the NES. Uh, the uh, uh, official reviews on Silent Service for the NES are pretty hard to come by when I was doing my look for this and doing my research. Uh, uh, I did see the IGN community gave it a rating of 5.9, which uh, I think is a bit low. But I think some of that is going to be split upon people who can play it and understand the day and what it did in its time, and the people who are just looking at it compared to you know what you might be able to pick up today, and uh, and thinking a little more roughly of it because of that. <coughs> it's uh, readily available. Uh, you can get it about anywhere. I think I paid 2.99 for my copy at a local retailer. So if you are into the thing, if you if you kind of want to check out an old school take on some submarine warfare that's got a lot of a lot of accuracy in it for its day, um, it's uh, why I've chosen as my recommended my recommended retro game of the week. Nice. I, I definitely you. wouldn't mind yeah. seeing a submarine game again. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. No, it's it's interesting. Uh, unfortunately, one of the people in the show got to hear it, but it's got you know, it's got the sound effects like you know when the destroyers were coming after me, you get the ping, and it's that. Ping, you're like, oh, oh crap! Yeah, that's awesome, <laughs> you know. And so you're like, Hunt dive for Red October. Yeah, it's 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 actually uh, like I said, it's I don't I don't know that it's considered one of like a classic. I try to keep <coughs> my recommendations a little a little bit esoteric sometimes, but um, like I said, if you're into the type of thing, if it's if it's something that could interest you, it's uh, it's an interesting look at gaming uh, at that time. I think. Nice, and the video is <coughs> pretty much done when you actually went faster than the uh than the video this time <laughs> yeah you know it's it, yeah. sometimes i just get on a roll but but yeah no i mean down to the different ship classes and everything it's it's historically accurate to the armaments of, of what they had and and, and then you basically wrap up here uh, you get your uh, tonnage for your leaderboard higher difficulties get you a higher scale so that you know, you can you can turn that up. I kind of love this little touch too, because when you put in your initials, you you put them in and it plays them back in Morse. And then when you sign it in, it plays the message in, in Morse code, which I think is just a, kind of a nice little touch. Mm. But yeah, it's uh, I'm glad to have a copy of it again and had haven't found it to to do the review with. Nice. All right, and so that is this week's. Juan's retro recommendation. We do this. Like say, he does this once a week, and it's really, <laughs> really cool. So, um, all right. So, I'll keep doing them as long as people want to keep seeing them. Yeah, oh, it's great. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, it really is. So. It's like walking through history for me because it's all new. So I appreciate it. Good deal. Yeah, yeah a lot of them are kind of like old games that I played at least once, or I've seen them being played. So. Just kind of, you know, brings up the past for me. Yeah. Nothing right. wrong with that. Well, thank you, Juan. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. We're, uh, uh, I think we've gotten everything. Um, unless, uh, Rick, was there anything else you wanted to let us know that we did not cover with the game, with uh, Deliverance? I mean, I, I think we're we're pretty good. I mean, if you yeah. want to get any more details, you can follow Warhorse Studios' Twitter account, my Twitter account, um, and you know you can check out YouTube videos. We we got a bunch of stuff on the game and video updates. Uh, you can go to IGN for our main Wikipedia page. So there's there's a whole bunch of stuff you can learn about the game. But I think I think we're good, man. I think, yeah, uh, it's and an accomplished. Your, uh, I mean, I got I got to tell you, your your energy um, and your enthusiasm on the game. Um, brings confidence yeah you know like really into does. a I mean, purchase it, you know it oh, to hear that. sold it sold it sold it yeah, on it me, sold me a lot so just you know i already was interested in the game but just you know your passion for it um you know and you're it's funny you're over here the developers are over there and yet you are so tied into it that I mean, it's impressive that's impressive well, I, I love the game i i've always been a fan so to actually work for these guys now even the way how it all went about was amazing, and I'm I'm just glad to be a part of it. So, well, and I, we really appreciate you coming on tonight with us. Um, Thank this you. This was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we love to talk to um, developers, and we love to we love to have them come on and talk about their games. And and you were just phenomenal. I mean, this is this is fantastic. We really enjoyed having you. I appreciate it, man. I'd love to jump in with you guys again. 
Absolutely. And yeah. on a day on a night we could just talk games and whatnot and, sure. and just sure. cover what's going on. Because um, you know we'd love to we'd love uh, next time around to get some uh, thoughts. Maybe you know maybe when you come back from uh, Gamescom, you know we can get some stories from you and stuff. Sure, I'd be down. That's cool. All right, and then of course you know we'll get you in the game with us. That that'll be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well we got to get the gamer tag thing going. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, get us through the end credits, and we can do that before we before we cut the call. Uh, but uh, anybody else here had anything for Rick before we rolled? Thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you. For I, I just by. wanted to say, now that you work in the gaming industry, you can tell your wife that you're just working when you're playing a game. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just paying the bills. I'm <laughs> pretty paying the bills. <laughs> I got to play this so I can pay the bills. Did you just uh, buy that game? Well, crying. you know, it helps. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> time to research. make the donuts. Research. Yep. No. All right, well, you tour. To our wonderful chat room, thank you guys so much. As always, you are great. And uh, for uh, uh, for a couple of the guys who have been in our chat room for the first time, thank you so much. Um, I'm having a little bit of weird issue with XSplit, so I can't put up the like and subscribe. But you guys know what to do. This is We've been around long enough. Uh, thank you guys. If you are watching this later on, don't forget we are on Sunday nights at 9 live. And you can get into this chat room and have a good time with us. Um, to the panel, thank you guys once again. Um, and to Rick, you know, one final time, man, this was an honor and a pleasure to have you. And uh, I can't wait to talk to you again. Yep, definitely. Look forward to it. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Yep. All right, Everyone. everybody, we will see you next week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the original Next Level Gaming Podcast. Peter, take us out. Diablo 3. Necromancy. Wait a minute. Do what? Oh. 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 What happened? Hi. Hi. He's hitting things. Ah, uh, didn't even start at the beginning like he was supposed to. Oh. That's how things go. He broke it. Like, so he's breaking broken. things. I know. Oh, there's the poop emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Frankie. Look, I didn't need. Oh my God! Still haven't fixed the beam thing. No, oh, yeah. It's now mixed. You had one job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one job. <laughs> oh man! Good night, everybody. Peace out, gamers. Bye, everybody. Yeah, game.